This is Into the Blue, a podcast about becoming an officer with the Waterloo Regional Police Service. For each episode, we start with a theme and bring you two perspectives, one from an officer in training and another from an officer in the community. In this episode, it's all about the non-stop learning of a police officer. I'll welcome back our digital content coordinator, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, Rachel. Thanks for having me back for this final episode. So we're going to check back in with Elias as he transitions from sharing a cruiser with a coach officer to working solo. We'll get him and Amanda to reflect back on their careers a bit so far and maybe give you some advice um, for you, the listener. And finally, uh, we'll check in with the next class and just see where they're at at the beginning of their journey. To be a successful police officer, you have to be up for the challenge. There are aspects of this job that can be really stressful and challenging. Yeah, and I think I agree. I I think one of the major hurdles about being a police officer, um, unfortunately, is the shift work. It just it comes with the job. Um, how does our shift work? And like, how do you describe that when you're talking to people out there in the community? So the way our rotating 12-hour shifts work is that we work basically four shifts on, have five days off, then work five shifts on, have four days off, and then work five shifts on and have five days off. And those blocks of shifts are mixed up between working a day shift and then working a night shift. Yeah. And and I, I've seen Elias kind of go through the process of learning that shift. And he's really nearing the end of being completely done his training, but he's still getting used to that shift schedule. What I learned speaking with other officers is that each one has their own way of coping. Elias is is no different. Yeah. Night shifts, the rotation work um, is hard. For me, I never done shift work. Again, I, work, I came from tech, man. Like I was going in with my Nike sneakers, like pajamas you can wear. It's fine. It's appropriate to coming here. And it's strict uniform, ironed and stuff. I know a lot of people say, oh, they can do it. But just really tap into yourself and ask yourself, like, are you actually able to do it? Like, I'm, mine's improving. I've had system now where... For example, night shifts, I have a coffee, which I never drank coffee ever before. I worked at Timmy's for five years. Went through university with no coffee. When I became a cop, I drank coffee. <laughs> it goes with the stereotype. But uh, yeah, I have a coffee at the beginning of the shift. And then on my lunches, we I usually go for a run on night shift and take a shower. And then I start drinking my energy drink. And that takes me till 7 a.m. So I can imagine responding to people's issues day in and day out can also be a bit of a mental grind. What are your what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, people who get into policing are interested in helping people. So um, I think, you know, the responding to people's issues day in and day out are kind of what we signed up for. But you do have to make sure you are taking care of yourself in that because we can get, you know, compassion fatigue and uh, just making sure that you're reaching out to the supports in your own kind of um, community or family uh, to make sure that you're still taking care of yourself while you're taking care of the community is important. I think your sentiment's definitely shared by others. Uh, and Amanda had a, a slightly slightly different take on the issue, but along the same lines. It's It really is true when they say that every day is different. It really is. Even though it may be like, say, for example, the same all over and over, but it's different people. The situations vary. Um, so you're never bored, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, do you feel that positive every day? Um, I wish I could say that I do feel that positive every day. Um, I think it comes in wave, like what you're talking about is the compassion fatigue. You just have to, to, to check yourself and, um, um, kind of fill your cup up in other ways, especially like, for example, uh, last year I did Citizens Police Academy and seeing how everyone else was so excited to do this job, it made me realize like, and just remember how lucky and appreciative I am to do this. What can make for not such a great day? Um, just the different personalities of the people that we have to work with. Sometimes it can, you said it can be challenging. People don't always like us. So, um, just reminding yourself when people are, uh, saying awful things and yelling at us and everything, just not to take it personal and it can get frustrating sometimes. Do you, do you feel like you're still learning? Yes. Definitely. Every day is still new. There's so many scenarios that um, 
still I've never been to. I don't think anyone, you could be on this job for 30 years. I don't, I still don't believe that you'll know everything. There's so much to, to learn. <laughs> I had a neat opportunity to follow your recruiting team as they started giving out job offers to the next class. I thought, what better way to finish off the series than a visit right back to the start? Hello? Hi, is Dahlia there? Yes, speaking. Hi, Dahlia, it's uh, Sergeant On Michael's this day, call. we needed to make a half a dozen or so offers, and one of my favorites was Dahlia. She had so many nice things to say. Congratulations. I'm so excited to bring you into our policing family. I have the entire team around me all smiling because you were successful. Congratulations and welcome to the Water Regional Police Service. Thank you so much. And I, I truly appreciate all your help throughout the whole process and for encouraging me to do it now and to not wait. And I'm just really overwhelmed with like the support and like I'm really, really happy right now. Our process has changed over the years, and it's been a while since you've looked at policing. We've added a lot of different kind of supports during the process. One of those supports was the addition of a recruiting outreach team, and, and that's you. Um, why don't you tell me a bit about what uh, you and right now your partners, Pete, yeah. uh, you guys do? Yeah, so on the outreach team, we're responsible for basically planning all of the recruiting events that the, the service runs. Um, we travel all over, you know, southern Ontario to different colleges and universities, um, doing, you know, giving information about Waterloo Regional Police and policing as a career. We also mentor people through the process, which is, I think, we're the only service who offers that. So if uh, people are interested in becoming a police officer or they're getting ready to apply, they can reach out to us and Pete and I will you know, talk to them one-on-one -on -one about specifically where they're at and kind of what they need to do to prepare um, for our process. And then throughout the process, we'll give prep for them for each of the stages. So um, the prep doesn't involve obviously giving answers or questions or anything, but we just make sure they're prepping, you know, they're on the right track with their prep and also just to ease their nerves, right? So it can be, a, you know, it's a long, intimidating process. And to have, you know, some kind of connection to the recruiting unit does help people feel more, you know, at ease and comfortable coming into the process and what we want is for people to show their true selves in the process and not be kind of consumed with their own nerves so um that's just a little bit about kind of what we do and i think the one of the most recent classes you had almost was it like 11 out of 12 or almost all of the yeah every yeah. recruit mm -hmm. so every recruit you had some kind of interaction with during the process and you kind of um, like everyone basically took advantage of, of your help and yeah. to their benefit, right? Yeah, I, I think it was, you're right, 11 of the 12 people. And I would say now, you know, when I see people who are coming to different stages of the process, Pete and I often recognize all their names because we've already been in contact with them, which is really cool. So Elias always spoke very highly of the whole recruiting team kind of from the start to the end of that process. But Delia had some really good insight into how this, you know, small team really helped her be successful. I had the same recruiting officer with me through every single exam and it was it would put me at ease because he was a familiar face. And um, Constable Molnar was there every step of the way to help me prep for each interview or exam and she would give me as much help or advice as she can without giving me too much help. Um, she was reaching out to me before and after, or I would reach out after, she would reach out before, and um, she was very supportive throughout the whole process. It was long, there was a lot of nerves, but at the end it was very, very smooth. So Rachel would call me before an interview, like before, before my interview in two weeks, and she would ask me, First, like questions like, are you nervous? How's the process so far? Make me a little comfortable with her. And then she would tell me um, just what they're looking for, but not specific answers. So with my ECI, she explained and put emphasis on your behaviors, your emotions, your, um, the, your process of thinking. And a lot of, um, when you answer your question, why are you answering it in that way? And so what? That helped me a lot. She would say, if you say this sentence or you say you're feeling this way, so what, why? And um, she also told me that you can't just assume they know things about you. You have to be very specific and very vocal about the whole 
the whole story or your whole answer. Um, if I'm talking about something intimidating or scary or a little bit of a situation that got out of control, I can't just assume they know that I'm afraid or they know that I was a bit anxious about it. I have to go through the whole thing detail by detail and it was really important. Obviously, these are things that you would think are very obvious during your exam. And, but when you're when you're sitting there during your exam and you got the jitters and you be get you get a little nervous, you you forget things and things slip out of your mind. But I'd always remember Rachel telling me, so what? And the details and do not assume they know anything about you. And it's a bit difficult because you have the same recruiting officer during every exam and you would say, but he knows this about me. He already heard this about me, but then you'd have to you'd have to remind yourself, let's pretend like we're strangers and I'll start from the beginning. And specifically, she had uh, nothing but appreciation about you, Rachel. She's been very supportive. She's been there every step of the way. Um, her support and recruitment support and everyone else's support here has been very overwhelming that sometimes I look back and I get really emotional because I couldn't have asked for a better region to apply. And um, I really look forward to you know, becoming part of the family. And I'm forever grateful for her patience and support. How important is uh, preparation in that application process? It is very important. So, you know, we give you the information um, about how to prepare. We give you the list of the competencies and it's, it's an applicant's job to do some self-reflection over the last few years of their life to determine, you know, situations or examples where they can demonstrate to us that they have those competencies. So if you don't do that preparation, it's going to be a lot harder to go into those interviews, especially the essential competencies interview, because it is a behavioral interview. And so the detail that we need is, um, is a lot. Before we finish off, I thought we'd check back in with Elias one more time. I caught up with him while he was doing his notes in a cruiser between calls on a Tuesday night. All right. All right. So what's different about yesterday and today than everything that's led up to this moment for a whole year? Well, yesterday was my first solo day. Um, it was quite interesting. Got into physical altercations with subjects who were not complying um, one of my firsts honestly and then one of my calls my first ever call also included the ERU unit our emergency response team so well and today it's the call screen is loading up so here we go one at a time at this point he had just been approved to go solo which means he's officially done all of his training did you feel prepared to go solo it feel it feels good because the coach officers, the training department really does prepare you until you're solo. It's definitely nerve wracking because you don't have your coach anymore, but you know that they're only a one phone call away and any other members of the platoon. Um, we all have our own interests and specializations in type of info that we like. Some people are really heavy into traffic. Some people are really into drugs, intel. So it's really nice to have a broad range of uh, interests that I can call up depending on what my situation is. Are you happy with your career choice so far? Yes, so far, yeah. <laughs> Every day is different. You have no idea what the next call is, the next minute what it can be. Um, and I think that's what really this career is all about. It's like that unexpected of what can I come next. Yeah, so the shorter term, what's kind of the next two years you would say? What are you really focusing on? Just developing into a more confident and op like more of a confident officer. Two years is not even enough time to really, you know, feel comfortable per se. Three to five years, you'll start feeling comfortable. For but for the next two is just focusing really hard and um, trying my best to learn. We talked about how the process to apply and the training is pretty involved, but both Amanda and Elias had some great advice for someone just getting started on this journey. 
you're not going to know it all. That's for sure. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing is just be uh, willing to, to learn and accept uh, feedback and learn from your mistakes. Um, you're not, there's so much, I think for me personally, like when I was in um, the chair of being coached, I thought I could never be a coach. There's so much information to learn. How am I ever going to know it all? And if you just slow it down and take the time, then like four years later, now I'm a coach and I've, it feels great to be able to, to be in the reverse role. Uh, so if today you could talk to Amanda on day one, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to her? Is there any advice you'd give her? Um, I would say just take um, a call at a time, ask for advice. Um, I think this sounds not to be, but like, I think I would say like, uh, be proud of myself as, but. Are you proud of yourself now? Like you've made it this far? I think so. Yeah. I think that I'm proud of, um, I think what I've accomplished over four years and, um, there's still so much to learn and grow. And I think as long as you take each day wanting to learn from each experience or each mistake, um, I think it goes a long way. Uh, any advice for somebody considering this career now? They, they've just come to our website. They're hearing this. Yeah. So I, some people actually come up to me in real life um, and they said, oh, yeah, I'm looking to apply and everything. I heard it's a great career. My first question I ask them is, you're not doing it for the money, right? And they say, no. Be like, good, because if you do it for the money, you will not enjoy this job. This is something you want to ask yourself. Is this something that I really want to do? I always just had to remind myself, you've always wanted this, that fake badge that's sitting right near your bed in your living room, it will eventually become real. And you always want to just keep fighting, keep fighting for it. So honestly, I reminded myself a lot, especially OPC when times were getting tough. And I was like, I don't know if I can really do this. You just push through. And, but again, I'm happy that I kept pushing through because it really did show and prove to me that Hard work does pay off. That will wrap it up for us for this six-part podcast series. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the website dedicated to becoming a police officer at joinwrps.ca. There you can find a lot of great information about the job, the process, and find ways to get in touch with us. Mark, thank you very much for going out there and bringing back these stories. Happy to help out. On behalf of all of us at the Waterloo Regional Police Recruiting Team, thanks for listening. Into the Blue is produced by the Waterloo Regional Police Service. It is hosted by Rachel Molnar and produced, reported, and edited by Marco Rujo. Supervising Director is Sherry Greeno. Special thank you to the entire dedicated training team at the Ontario Police College, as well as the WRPS Training and Education Branch. Without their collaboration, this production would not be possible. <laughs>